There are not a lot of pro gamers out there who can claim that they have won their last three encounters against Serral. At the very least, as far as I'm aware of, there is nobody except for the man right over here in the bottom left hand corner of game number one on a map called El Cyane. Playing with the red Zerg pieces from South Korea, we're looking inside of the main base of Solar. Now, this is a strangely timed drone. Ah, okay. Now that's a strategy we don't really see all too often. I mean, I know that Bly recently picked up StarCraft 2 again. I can imagine that this is a build that Bly would be very fun to go ahead and give a try, as Solar decides to go for a gold rush. As you may have already guessed, his opponent all the way in the opposite corner, playing with the blue Zerg pieces, or looking at none other than Serral's main hatchery. Now I think overall, in their last couple encounters, right? So first off, in the WTL Winter, Solar won 3-2-2. In the WTL Summer, a couple months before that, Solar won 2-0. And then, well, right before that, at Gamers 8, one of the biggest tournaments of this year, I think there was a prize pool of like half a million dollars. It was Solar who won 3-2-0 over Serral, which is kind of nuts. Anyways, um, generally speaking, right? I think overall, Serral is the stronger macro player, and on top of that, he's also the better micro player. So I think he's better, mechanically speaking. He makes more stuff, and he controls that stuff better. However, Solar, and obviously this always remains a strategy game, has been out-strategizing Serral quite a bit. And look at this. Cheeky little drone transfer right now, making its way towards those golden minerals. And once again, Solar is exactly trying to do that. He's not even playing the matchup, he's not playing the map, he's very much so playing the opponent. He knows that Serral generally doesn't play an aggressive game. Like, Serral scouts this right now, clearly this is something he has seen before, but how in the world do you respond to this? I mean, there is gonna be a little bit of a dip in, yeah, as far as the income goes here for Solar, because he has to transfer those drones. But now, for the foreseeable future at least, he's gonna have a steady improvement as far as the income goes compared to his opponent, despite the fact that even at this point, Serral has slightly more drones out. I mean, it's even at this point. But when I started that sentence, at the very least, there was a very small deviation. Alrighty, so, are we gonna... Yeah, we are. Are we gonna follow this up with anything aggressive as well? Because this makes a lot of sense in my mind. Roach Warren coming up. If Serral is the one who gets to be aggressive here, Solar is gonna have to defend both his third base. I guess we can call this a third base. It's not really a third. Both his fourth base, maybe his fifth base, as well as his main. Like, that's too much distance to cover. He needs to go across. I mean, there's some rocks over here. Yeah, he starts working on those debris, so at the very least he can, he can move units around. But I think being the aggressor here is way easier because, well, you get to just put all of your units in one big place, whereas if you're playing a defensive game, you have to be so cautious. Roach Warren coming up right now as well for Serral. I think this originally may have been a Evo Chamber maybe, but I decided to cancel that and put down the Warren here instead. Excellent choice overall, but does he have enough? That's always the question. So, third base coming up for both players actually. Serral's is quite a bit sooner. Couple hidden banelings over here as well. I mean, hidden to the point where they are hard to attack right here for Solar. Yeah, not a lot of surface area. Queen over here out front. Good movement right here by Serral, but once again, this is a, a bit of an uphill battle. There's those roaches coming across. That being said though, that roach warrant there for Serral was also quick, and this is something that Solar sees right now. He's gonna scout around the main base, okay. No lair, no Evo chamber, no nothing. Serral is committed to the defense here. Ha, huh. yeah, do you really wanna push up this ramp right now? I would be hesitant too. Because at this point, it's clear that you've been spotted. It's clear that the opponent prepared as well. Okay, Solar decides to drone up. This is a little bit awkward now, because now we're at a point where both players have a massive army, but neither of them really wants to fight. <laughs> so they've been making all these units. Yeah, Solar's just gonna make the march of shame all the way back home, it seems. Not really taking a lot of chances. A couple of his Zerklings do get caught over here on the left side of the map. Okay. So apparently now Serral is the one who does get to be the aggressor, and I think that's basically exactly what Solar was trying to avoid. Because look at the amount of space he needs to cover here. Lovely overlord position as well here by Serral, so he can see everything. Which is really, really nice. Couple banelings morphing in on the right side here as well, and this may very well be something that Solar doesn't have vision of. Solar really needs to have overlords out front. Okay, he's just splitting his units here preemptively. 
trying to make sure that he does not get caught with his pants down. So far, those Banelings very conservatively being used. Man, both players have just been making a massive army! Okay, well, that's only a single worker going down. Not nearly as exciting as Serral was probably hoping for either. Maybe he should have gone for three Banelings rather than just the two. Solar has been catching a bunch of his opponent's units, though. That was a nice detonation on the Baneling. But serral has been droning quite greedily on, on the back of this, too. So he's got 37 workers right now. For there's only 29 for Solar. Solar did make drones, but not nearly as many as serral has been producing. Spinecrawler is coming up. But I think the Roach numbers right here for Solar may just be a little bit too big. We're talking 18 versus only 6. Solar playing mind games left, right, and center. Now morphing in the low HP Roaches into Ravagers as well. Trying to save those units by popping them into a cocoon. Spinecrawler eventually does come up, but this is already a lot of damage. And honestly, may just be a little bit too much. There's still, yeah, more and more reinforcements coming across the map. Game number one, it goes in favor of our South Korean Zerg. And he does so once again by playing very cheeky games. Okay. Game number two, we find ourselves on Oceanborn. Now, I actually saw a discussion in the YouTube comment section a couple of days ago. I think this was on an older video of mine. But people were talking about whether or not the pro gamers remember every single game that they've played in tournaments. I can guarantee you that, well, maybe for the guys that play tons of games, so the players that you see me cast all the time, some of them, they compete in literally a dozen tournaments every week. Maybe they, maybe they don't remember literally every single match. But guys like Serral, who compete in relatively few tournaments, I can guarantee you that Serral now realizes that in like the last dozen games he's played against Solar, he's lost like nine of them, okay? He must be aware of the fact that he has lost the vast majority of their games. As a matter of fact, at Home Story Cup, which is a StarCraft 2 tournament that I've been casting for years now. In case you're unfamiliar, it's a little bit different. It's a bit of a different atmosphere than the average StarCraft 2 tournament. Basically, a lot of pro gamers join the cast as well when either they're eliminated from the tournament or they just have the day off. They don't need to play that day. Anyways, a long story short, oftentimes those guys, when they're on the couch and they're casting games with me, they will literally bring up the most obscure games from like half a decade ago. They will give me the map name, the spawn locations, the moment at which they get supply blocked, like all of the little details. So yes, there is no chance that Serral is not aware of the fact at this point that he has been losing too much against Solar. I don't know exactly how many details he remembers, but I think it's safe to assume he knows literally every single minute little detail of every single one of the games that he's lost. Anyhow. Can he fix it, right? That's always the question. Can he fix the mistakes that he's been making? And can he make it so that he does not lose games moving forward here? Because now Solar has got, well, two shots at obtaining the victory here over Serral. Okay. We've got ourselves normal builds here so far. Nothing all too crazy. Hatchery into a gas geyser into a spawning pool. No more 15 hatch shenanigans, by the way, from Serral. So he's not bothering with... Yeah, that's actually kind of interesting. So for a few months, he was playing 15 hatch in every single matchup. But now in the last couple games that I've seen him play, he doesn't play it a single time. I don't know, guys. I thought maybe we were onto something new, but apparently Serral's going uh, out with the new and in with the old. <laughs> Which is usually not what you do. But it may just be that the old stuff was indeed superior in the end. And yeah, we just... Uh tried to figure out maybe if the new strategy was indeed a little bit better. <sighs> Solar! Ah, Solar has actually been mining a lot more gas here than Serral. Yeah, so Serral pulled a drone out of gas. Solar must have had his drones in gas the entire time. He did go, okay, this is cheeky. He did go for, yep, there it is, okay. This is a build that I've played quite a bit myself, so. He went for the third base, as well as the bingling nest here, at what looks like a normal timing. So at this point, Serral's seen the timing of the opponent's third base, he compares it to his own, and he realizes, yep, everything's A-OK. -okay. In the meantime, on the back of it, we've had a lot of additional gas income, and now also a hidden Roach Warren. So this is Solar cutting a couple drones here to make sure that his opponent believes that this is once again a normal macro game. It's not. This is, for all intents and purposes, an all-in right here for Solar, or at the very least something he needs to deal damage with. Like, the absolute bare minimum, if you want a drone behind, is to kill the opponent's third base. So, he's gonna make as many roaches here as possible. Serral did, by the way. Okay, he's a little suspicious. 
He did go for a Roach Warren defensively here at about three and a half-ish minutes. That is a little earlier than we would normally see it, but he is droning behind it as well. Roaches are coming, though, here for Solar. That third base, I mean, now he knows. Yeah, now Cyril knows. There's no workers at the third. That is all you really need to see. There's no production. There's nothing defending it. This is a push. And, well, Cyril sees the units now moving across the map. He has been preparing money, though. So Cyril actually may have purposefully been not spending his resources there to pump out five roaches all in one go. Six roaches right now. Second gas coming up. Okay. So even though Cyril didn't find out about this until, well, very late... This is still a manageable position, although he cannot really afford losing any units for free. One queen is definitely going to go down. Roaches are coming, though. And... Ooh, yeah, he's going to be able to push back these first couple units here off solar. Honestly, just killing the third is not enough, though. Oh! He could have actually gotten all of those links once again. Sloppy movement there by solar. Excellent detonations there by Serral. And he pushes this back. Serral actually kept the third base alive as well. That was actually a pretty poor execution from Solar. Not only did he commit to fighting over here, but then back off. The Zorklings never finished off the third base. He's droning behind it right now, but now it's Serral's time to just make non-stop army and go across the map. He gets a couple of the low HP roaches targeted down as well. Solar doesn't even want to fight at home. Yeah, he realizes at this point that he would lose the game in 30 seconds from now, so rather than giving his opponent the satisfaction, and I guess the viewers the satisfaction as well, he decides to tap out early. Very crisp defensive execution right there by Cerro. He knew exactly what he needed to do, maybe that one queen overstayed ever so slightly, but he forced Solar to make a few mistakes there, and that's ultimately why he was allowed to hold. I think if Solar would have been able to snipe the third base, it would have still been playable, but yeah, running your Zerklings past those Banelings a couple of times is really not what you're looking to do, and that was certainly not what Solar was hoping for. Okay, so that brings us to Heart Lead. Final game in his best of three. Are we gonna go for anything cheeky once again? Looks like it will be a hatchery first here on both sides of the map. Heartland is not a map with like a gold base or anything like that, so you're gonna have to catch your opponent off guard just by playing, you know, better than them. If you want to play, you know, a cheeky little game. Obviously in this matchup, you can also go for like a... Not just a Link Flood or a Roach Rush, but you can also catch your opponent off guard with things such as Mutalisks or a Nidus Worm that you suddenly pop in your opponent's main base, but in general... Yeah, it's difficult. I mean... I, I guess one of the problems for Serral in the Zerg versus Zerg matchup is that there is no go-to safety build order, right? So there's not a build order that is like a jack-of-all-trades type of build where you're just sort of not dying to 90 plus percent of the build orders out there. Like you can do in Zerg versus Terran and Zerg versus Protoss. Like say, for example, you face off against Solar in a tournament, right? And you're a Protoss player. Solar will make Spore Crawlers at three and a half minutes in every single one of his mineral lines 95% of the time. Because he will assume that those 300 minerals that he loses, he can make up for by playing a little bit better than you in the next couple minutes, right? Whereas it keeps him safe, not just against oracles, but also against phoenixes, potential cheeky void ray, or a war prism can be a ras with it, even against dark templar it can be helpful. So it's one of those like safety precautions that you can take to not die to stupid stuff, right? In Zerk versus Zerk, I guess there's just so much stupid stuff that it's hard to be safe against everything. So you can technically be safe against early game shenanigans by going for a pool first and a quick bailing nest and all that. But then you fall behind against a normal opener like the one that Solar is going for here. So for Serral, I think his best play is to just play that macro game he always tries to force and then defend whatever the opponent has got in store for him. But obviously the margin for error when every unit moves at like 100 miles a minute and yeah, it's 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 not it's not great. It's, it's very easy to accidentally make a mistake. This matchup, it is unforgiving to say the least. Anyways, for now, normal openers that we pull drones out of gas. We did, and I'm assuming, yep, Serral did the same thing as well. Now Serral does have his moments though, where he does play very aggressively and he does play very cheesy, but. Nine times out of ten, we will encounter the Serral that we're seeing in this series as well. Where it's just rock-solid gameplay. And 
yeah, it allowed, well, for, for example, the build that Solar went for in game number one with that really quick golden base. A little bit of a misread right there by Sarah, but it's incomplete information, right? I guess this matchup is more of a coin flip, more of like a rock, paper, scissors, maybe, than a Zerg versus Terran or a Zerg versus Protoss. So even if you are one of the very best players, if not the best player in the world, it's very easy to still accidentally mess up and lose, even though you feel like you've made all the right decisions. Anyhow. Uh, that Roach Warren is at about 350, so not quite as quick as the one that we saw before. We do have an Evo Chamber here, much quicker for Solar, though. So Solar seems like a bit more comfortable here. Skirmish over here at the front. Banelings are gonna try and run into the natural expansion, but these get shut down easy peasy. So they're all trying to create a distraction on the right and then move in on the left. No great detonation on those two banes. Nah, excellent done. Excellent work right here by, by Solar. Shutting down everything with ease so far. Yeah, and ultimately, if this is gonna lead to Roach Wars, which seems to be the case right here for Solar and for Serral, Solar is gonna have an upgrade lead, and upgrade leads in this matchup are massive. So only just now is when the Evo Chamber comes up right here for Serral. And that's a big deal. Oh, looks like there's another hole over here in that wall. But the Zerklings are gonna run in and scout whatever's going on. Nothing all too crazy. Oh, he actually cancelled the Roach Warren, I think, and then repositioned it. Trying to make sure that the wall is indeed solid this time around. Okay, fair enough. Lair coming up here for both players. The one for Serral is a little bit quicker, but look at the upgrade difference. That's actually so big. Yeah. Solar's got about a half an upgrade and advantage here, which is huge. As long as he can start a plus two before his opponent, I think he will be pretty happy, and he should be able to do so significantly. Still, though, the Link Bane aggression is not done yet. Both players trying to outsmart each other. Solar trying to get one of those Bane Links in blue to pop, but not really getting too much value there. Yeah, ultimately, it's a relatively small amount of units that have gone down in this game. 14 drones coming up for Solar. Overlord speed actually here for Saro as well. That's usually just to make sure you can patrol these overlords and make sure they don't get biled down. Or say for example, you are going up against Mutas, you can bring those units back home, but yeah, the positioning here of that base in a horizontal expansion pattern rather than the triangular one, the overlord speed, I mean, it's all very defensive. Now we have Solar making a bit of a pivot here, going from Roaches into a Spire. Serral, by the way, still has not started up his Roach speed upgrade. Okay, there he goes. That's actually pretty late, considering his lair was faster than that of Solar. Hatchery over here. Banelings, maybe? Yeah, Banelings on the right side. Plus a kill on that fourth. Okay, that is a sequence of events that Serral has been looking for this entire game long. Okay. So, the drones on the right killed five workers. Or, sorry, the Banes on the right. Killed five workers. They were hanging out over here for some time. I saw them on the minimap. And then at the same time, we had the Lings as well on the left, and Solar butchered both of those engagements. Sarah has now also seen the Spire over here, it looks like, as we have a Hydralis then coming up. Keep in mind that with the new multiplayer balance patch, it's a bit easier to get those Hydras going. So... The Hydras are just, yeah, a bit easier to come up with, and those upgrades are a bit cheaper to get. So let's see, are we still gonna go across? Without the road speed, it is a little risky. I think Serral actually accidentally delayed that upgrade. Zorkling's coming in from the right as well. Yeah, is this gonna be Mass Muta? Doesn't look like it, but obviously Serral doesn't know that. So it's gonna be seven Mutas for now at least, into Roaches with plus two Missile. All right, Saro is going to commit. He was waiting, I guess, for his link speed and his roach speed to be done. Link speed finished up a while ago. The roach speed to be done. Mutas, however, are out. I think this fight was supposed to take place a few minutes ago. Okay, maybe not a few minutes. It feels like a few minutes. Maybe like 30 seconds or so ago. Yeah, the roaches in blue will win the war on the ground, but ultimately those mutas are just going to be able to shut all of this down. Okay. What this does achieve, though, is that Serral buys enough time here to get the Hydras out. Yeah. So now the Hydralists are already upgraded with their ranged upgrade, and they're going to be getting their movement speed upgrade here as well before too long. 
Spore crawlers coming up defensively in the mineral lines. Not at the fourth, but I think the hydros are going to be hanging out over there. And ultimately, this is looking much better here for Serral. At least a lot more comfortable, I think, for Serral than the previous games. Okay. Zerklings coming in once again. Not really achieving that much. Queens here forced to run. Drones forced to skirmish around as well. Okay, we do have... I think... Was that a... Was that Banelings? Ah, yeah. A couple Banelings here from Solar. Getting some work done too. But Roaches were prepared. Okay. Crisis management right there. On point. Could have been the entire mineral line. If that was me playing. <laughs> Ultimately right here though. Small amount. Queens also target firing down one of the Mutas themselves. Which is not bad whatsoever. Yeah, and ultimately, I don't think I love this early game here for Solar very much anymore. So he's just going into mass. Ooh, lovely contamination there as well. He's just going into... I mean, he's not contaminating anything because there was no upgrade going, but... He's just um, going into mass Road Ravager from here, where Acero has got Roaches with Hydras. No Corruptors. Or, sorry, no Corruptors. No Ravagers either. But these fights are tricky, man. There's a lot of choke points on hard lit. And surface area in these Roach Wars is everything. Okay, we do have some Ravagers coming up as well. I like it, actually. You don't want to go Mass Ravager here as Serral. Like, Roach Hydra is a little bit better. But a few Ravagers to force your opponent to micro. Okay, well, this is the moment, apparently, where we decide to commit. Serral decides to run through the corrosive biles. Not what Solar expected. And he's ending up losing quite a few of his troops. Although those biles are ultimately going to force him to move back for now. Solar trying to go back home. Okay, I thought maybe Serral could have cut him off. He decided to go that way. Good movement right there, though. By the finisher once again. So Hydras do a lot more damage than Roaches. And if they have Roaches in front of them to tank. With the ranged upgrade, they can fire over those Roaches pretty easily. So the damage output of this army in blue is significantly better. Nice concave here set up as well. He does take a couple of balls to the face, but Solar is heavily losing that fight. I think this really goes to show how strong those Hydras truly are. Those Mutas are achieving absolutely nothing. They've achieved basically nothing in this entire game at all. Other than, of course, the cost of the Spire, the cost of the Mutas. And ultimately, apparently, that's all that Serral really needs. In a straight-up macro game, he does seem to be the better player. Then again, though, with a small few adjustments, I really think this could have been a 2-0 win for Solar instead. Remember that previous game?